Thank you, Madam Speaker. I thank the gentlelady for yielding. And for the fourth consecutive year, I rise as one of the few but faithful Republicans in strong support of this good legislation. Here is the question presented. Should sexual harassers who work for big businesses get to pick their juries in advance? Because he just can't prepare for prison life in quiet, Matt Gates is doing what he does best, making a damn fool of himself. Welcome to TYT's Overruled. I am your host, legal analyst, Adrian Lawrence. Florida Congressman Matt Gates took to the House floor on Monday to speak on a bill that I've been following closely as an advocate who speaks against workplace sexual harassment. I even wrote an award-winning book on the matter. It's right there. So this much is very much in my lane. So what's this bill about? Well, this bill is set to end forced arbitration for those who are suing for workplace sexual harassment and assault. It's a first of its kind on the subject. But it's much needed in terms of, hey, getting companies to stop forcing people into this court-like proceeding that typically sends the employee home with a lot less money than if they were able to actually sue in court. And Congressman Gates opted to be among the first to speak in favor of the bill. Picking up from the opening, here's the Honorable Gates. I think that the populist, nationalist right approach is to believe that the Article Three courts that we have set up for any and all function as the proper venue. But for tens of millions of American workers, that courthouse door is locked. It is closed. It is inaccessible. The result is that a system exists for concierge justice, private sector justice. And the evidence before the Judiciary Committee, undeniably, is that big business wins more cases, shuts down more awards, and is able to reduce awards in the arbitration setting, as opposed to the setting that anybody else would be able to enter in a taxpayer-funded court. All right, so Gates is essentially making the point uh, that I happen to call arbitration advantage. As much as I loathe this individual, Gates is absolutely correct. If you're fired from a job because you wouldn't sleep with someone or you stood up for someone who was being mistreated due to their gender, but you signed an arbitration agreement, you'll never see the inside of a courtroom. You'll end up in arbitration where essentially the employer wins the vast, vast majority of the time. And by that, I'll go ahead and quote myself. The American Arbitration Association, AAA, which handles half of all employment disputes in the country, awarded employees money in a meager 1.8% of 8,209 complaints filed between 2013 and 2014. Said another way, if you're forced into arbitration, you're going to go home with nothing. So Maddie is right here. I'll let him continue. That is wrong. We have all heard about the fine print in this country. No one reads the fine print. He probably didn't read the fine print for Venmo, huh? Sorry about that. But the fine print shouldn't be a reason that someone is more likely to have to endure sexual harassment in the workplace or more likely to evade consequence as the result of predatory behavior. I want to especially thank the majority for incorporating a number of the minority's views to make this bill stronger and more likely to become law. And I sincerely hope that I'm not here for a fifth year advocating for its passage again. I think that the gentlelady and I yield back. Yeah, so that was Gates out in these streets talking about predatory behavior. Seriously. While I appreciate having as many voices as possible to end forced workplace arbitration, you can't tell me that this wasn't a ploy by Gates and Co. The man is staring down the barrel of federal charges for child sex trafficking and various campaign contribution donations. So I can't imagine he's really that concerned in stopping predators. And he damn sure wasn't concerned when it came to ending predatory behavior in 2017 when Mr. Gates was the lone vote in the House against an anti-human trafficking bill. These harassals really know no bounds. Matt Gates is seemingly putting on a PR press conference pretty heavy in his effort to increase his campaign contribution, so hopefully he can pay for the legal help that he needs and will likely need in upcoming months. To exploit those already exploited by big business with workplace contracts that are one-sided and oppressive is such a Gates move. May he get all that he deserves and then some. In the meantime, I'm grateful this bill did pass the House and hopefully the Senate will be coming soon. The playing field needs to be leveled when it comes to the power plays in the workplace. So you let me know your thoughts below. Hit that like and follow button. And thanks for watching.